Uh, good morning guys. <coughs> so this is the day after the fire. Um, you know, we're looking at about 10.30 the next day. And as you can see, looking over there, it's still burning. So we're going to go up here and see how close we can get in today. See how much damage we had. And then uh, go from there. Got some porta potties. I guess they place those all over town, which is a nice thing. Got too many people gawking and not going to be paying attention to what they're doing. Shoot up this alley here. Okay, so right there, I do believe was probably like ground zero. See, that's nuts. It doesn't look like there's a soul here. Oh, and it stinks. So this thing right here, that, that building right in front of us is what saved us. That was like a 24 inch concrete. And as you can see right over there, that's all the storage tanks for all the chemicals that they use. And uh, I was told yesterday that if those would have went, it, it would have took out a, a big, big area. But you can see all the aerosol cans just laying around everywhere. I mean, they are scattered all over the place. Um, you know, you want to give a big, you know, shout out to, to all the first responders, responders in the area. I mean, they came from everywhere. I heard that we had people from, you know, El Dorado and Wichita. Uh, you know, the state here last night, all the highway patrolmen that came into town, all the sheriffs from other places that, to watch out for everything for us. You know, if you look at where those tanks are and to think that it was 24 inches of concrete, the only thing was stopping those things from going. These guys are some brave guys that could stay here and be more worried about their, saving their community than their own lives because if they would have, those things would have went, they would have never known what hit them. You would have never found them. So, you know, those guys are some brave individuals right there. So, but if you can see, you know, we ran out of water in the city yesterday. And uh, that's where our big crisis is now is we, we have no water at all. Um, the runoff from this, all the chemicals went through the storage, storm sewer drains right into the river, right above our intake for our water treatment plant. So that's going to be the big problem now is when are we going to be able to start drawing water off the river again to even start the process of cleaning our pipes out to where we can drink. But you see those big bladders up there, they were bringing in tanker trucks and they were filling those bladders up yesterday to, to keep dousing this fire. And uh, you know they just keep running. You know that was a good thing about being in a small rural community is that we have so many rural fire departments that that was one of our, our key defenses in this is once we ran out of water we had enough resources available to start drawing off of that and all these tanker trucks came in and they were used to drawing off of ponds and rivers to fight fires so it was just another day for them and it it saved it but I'm gonna get out of here for right now I'm gonna go down the river all right guys so we're getting out here we're uh a lot of these first responders were drawing their water from right over here at this pond. You can see some farmer had a tractor or some big pump that brought in to use. You know, and uh, so everybody pulled together yesterday. Everything worked. So this is our old power plant. What a lot, a lot of people might not realize is that it's behind this power plant is where we draw 
for our city water. So yesterday, some of the photos I seen this river look like watered down mustard. <laughs> and today, it looks normal. See how close I can get down here without falling down this bank. Yeah, see how it looks a lot better today. Um, I don't know if you can see, but right over that way, <coughs> excuse me, there's a barrel and then there's the intake pipe and that feeds the pump house right up here. All that storm water dumped out right ahead of this. So all those chemicals came down through here. So I guess the good news is, is that this is clearing out. You know, now whether when KDHE comes in here and, and I've heard that they've sent out some water samples, you know, to see if it's safe to start pumping again. But until that process starts, we're not going to have your water in this community. And then once they probably get to go ahead to start pumping, <coughs> you're looking at several days for them to start flushing the lines to make sure there's no bacteria that developed from running the lines dry. Um, I know it's Thanksgiving weekend, and there's probably a lot of people frustrated right now that that this has happened but you know this is a day to be thankful for you know there was only three injuries in that whole deal you know one guy got burnt I heard it was you know it was serious but I heard he's gonna be okay and the other two were just smoke inhalation and they drove themselves to the hospital so you can't be more thankful th for that I mean these guys did it right yesterday you know they had a plan the plan worked and you know now it's just an inconvenience and uh you know being able to go home tonight to my family and have a house to go home to you know thanks to these guys i'll take that any day of the week but uh we'll go back up here real quick but it looked like there's a lot of people over here the water plant's just straight ahead of us so it looked like there's quite a few people over there and i'm sure you know, these guys just got done running, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a long time because our intake over there got broke off in, in the flood not too long ago. And they were borrowed a pump from the Corps engineers. So I know these guys will step it up and they'll do what they need to do to make sure that we have fresh drinking water as soon as possible. You know, yeah, there's quite a few people over there now. So I'm going to take a run out to the other end of town out here and uh, see what the river looks like down there because all this is going downstream guys so it's going to start affecting other communities other than just us so uh we'll go out there and see what it looks like okay so we're not that far from the intake down here at the city dam so as you can see i don't i don't know if the video will be clear enough but I can look over there and kind of see, you know, a different little greenish haze. You know, and that could be the foam from the water. But the way it's kind of settling out, I don't know, it looks pretty clean up that way. And I mean, it really looks kind of clean, definitely above the dam to me, but I'm not a chemist. So, all right, we'll go see what the next stop looks like. Okay, well, this bridge up here, 4th Street Bridge, that would be the next point that is accessible, you know, to the public that you can check at. So, we'll uh, see what we got going on up here. Oh! That doesn't look good. Wow. <clears throat> that is definitely not good. 
that's some nasty water right there guys <clears throat> and that's the sad thing is is all that is going downstream so how many people how many towns communities is this going to affect i don't know but that's nasty I mean, you're you're looking. This is what over probably 27 hours after this whole thing started, and uh, that's still bleeding out of the river. That's crazy. <clears throat> Cannot be good. I'm gonna maybe go up here and see if I can get in this bean field and see uh, what it looks like there. Okay, well, I normally don't do this going flying across farmers' fields and things, but you know, I wanna see if I can figure out how far back this mess is at. I think I might be able to get right over here. Good thing about a dual sport, you can go anywhere. Oh man. So we're a quarter mile back and uh, it's still green. All right, we'll uh, go a little further and see what it looks like there. But you can look back in town and you can still see the smoke plume from the fire still going. So, all right, we'll go up a little bit further. Okay, well, kind of running through town here a little bit. I've noticed when I got into town, it's, man, the stench is horrible. You know, I heard that they've got uh, the EPA in here doing like air quality tests and everything, but it, it stinks, guys. I mean, I didn't smell this down at my house. You know, and I'm closer to the outcome of it than, than down here but you know the wind's kind of out of the north it does it it stinks you know but I noticed I'm sure they're letting that stuff burn out if it's not going to be a big hazard so they don't have to worry about contaminating any more of the river which is a smart thing but I mean somewhere we're going to pay for it you know, I guess, you know, which is the less of two evils. So, uh, all right, we'll see what it looks like out here in a minute. Well, I might regret this, but we're going to see if we can get in here. Oh, man, that's still, still green. <laughs> Hopefully this thing will stay. <clears throat> Let's walk back down in here. Wow, it still looks nasty. I mean, it does. I mean, from here, it's hard to tell, but it does. It looks a little bit better up that way. But I don't know that I can get up there. Uh, well, we'll see. Well, I tried to make it back up in there a little bit further, <coughs> and it's just kind of soft, so. I gave up. So anyway, we'll go ahead and end this thing here and uh, you know, we'll do all right as a community. We'll all come together and another week and we'll forget about it. So if you like everything, give it the big old thumbs up and uh, subscribe and uh, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving weekend.